Every year, 19 people go overboard while on a cruise ship or ferry. Since 2000, roughly 300 people have gone overboard and multiple deaths have been attributed to these incidents. Being at sea, often for days and weeks at a time, it is not unheard of for cruise passengers to fall victim to the endless ocean beneath their feet. So when James Christopher Scavone disappeared without a trace, aboard Carnival Cruise Line's Destiny in 1999, initial speculation was that he had sadly fallen and gotten lost at sea. Traveling with his best friend Jeff and 12 members of Jeff's family, Scavone joined his friends and the family to dinner one night before visiting the casino and dancing at the Point After Disco Club. Hours later, at around 12.30 in the morning on July 5th, Jim excused himself from the scene telling his friends that he felt ill. That was the last time anybody would see Scavone. When the group returned to the cabin later that night at around 3 a.m. with no signs of their friend since he politely departed hours before, they assumed he had met someone and expected to see him in the morning. Seven hours later, after an attempt to contact Scavone via intercom, a manhunt began that included a room-by-room -room search on the boat and a pan over the waters by the U.S. Coast Guard. Investigators initially believed that Scavone's best friend was involved in his disappearance and proceeded to question him for hours before he was eventually ruled out as a suspect. Weeks later, after James's mother asked for the itemized bill of her son's sale card, it revealed no activity from the 22-year-old, proving that he had not re-entered his room or bought anything after going off on his own at 12.30. With no body or evidence of foul play, it appears to be a simple and tragic case of a man falling overboard. But seven years after the disappearance, after an airing of the story on primetime, a witness stepped forward with a lead that suggested there was to be more to the tragedy than initially believed. After viewing James's case on TV, she claimed to be a passenger of the ship at the time of James's disappearance and said she recognized his face from the cruise. She told a bizarre story of a phone call she received on the morning of July 5th. A young man's voice on the other end of the line saying, Help me, I can't get out of here. Followed by a scream, scuffling, and what she described as furniture being moved around the room. The following comes directly from a message posted by the family years ago on the International Cruise Victims website. Is about the woman and some of the details she shared with them about the case. Make it as you will. She told us that later in the week she asked about my son and the ship told her that he had been engaged prior to the trip and his fiance had broken up with him. They said he was despondent and probably committed suicide. This is a total fabrication. She contacted Carnival Cruise's corporate offices after the trip in the hopes of being able to contact us. Carnival Cruise told her they had no record of anyone disappearing from the Destiny on July 5th, 1999. Whether or not the claim made by the woman is fact, fiction or some sort of unrelated incident that has not yet been confirmed. The woman was interviewed by both the FBI and the ship authorities who still have not come to a definitive conclusion. Even as many stick with the claim that he had an accident 
Many questions have surfaced regarding the details of the incident. Does James feeling sick prior to his departure from the group have anything to do with his disappearance? How come no sightings of James were reported after he split off from his friends? Where did he go? Did he make it to the bathroom? What do we make of the Ollie specific story from the woman about the phone call? If true, what could it mean about the case? If false, why make something up like that? No updates to the case have been posted in some time, and foul play has not been officially suspected by police. But without remains, a bizarre yet unconfirmed story contradicting the leading theory and a cruise company that may not have been fully cooperative throughout the investigation, there's just really no way of knowing what truly happened that night. While officially closed back in August of 2000, the case remains unsolved to this day and is still used as an example to emphasize cruise safety and cruise liner accountability all over the world. No matter what happened with Scavone or other victims who have vanished at sea, it remains evident that the ocean is a vast and dangerous place. Hopefully, the family was able to find at least some closure in the aftermath of an unimaginable situation. Thank you for watching. I know this is quite different from my other previous animated videos. This is more factual and educational. I just wanted to try some new things out. I also want to give a thanks to Anon NAM for allowing me to make this video. So with that being said, please let me know whether or not you like this video. Based on how the video does and what the feedback is, I can make more of these types of videos. Thank you again, and as always, like, share, and subscribe.